Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on how you can hear God's voice. I tell you, this is super important. And the sad fact is that the average Christian does not consistently hear God's voice. I don't think any of us hear God's voice as well as we could, as well as we should. But there are some people that honestly, they don't even think that God... Uh, wants to speak to us on a regular basis. They think that this is only for the super saints, the super dupers, that maybe you hear God's voice, but the average Joe Blow, Jane Doe Christian, you just can't hear God's voice. I spent all of Monday's broadcast talking about how important it is and how that God wants to speak to us individually. And then I also talked about that one of the keys to hearing God's voice is that you have to seek it. And I use Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13, also Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, about how you have to ask to receive, you have to seek to find, you have to knock before it's opened unto you. And one of the reasons that people don't hear God's voice is because they just can live without it. They aren't really seeking. They haven't pursued hearing God's voice. But that is a real key. It doesn't just happen automatically. You have to pursue it. You have to seek it. As long as you can live without having God speak to you and direct you in your life, then you will. But when you get to a place that, man, you just aren't willing to live like that, you want to hear God's voice, then you will hear the Lord speak to you. So that's a key. I also talked about how you have to have some knowledge, and I use Second Peter chapter 1 where it talks about all things that pertain unto life and godliness, which certainly one of those things that pertains unto life and godliness is having God speak to you and hearing His voice, getting to where you can distinguish what He's saying to you. And it says it all comes through the knowledge of Him. And then the next verse, first, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, says that this knowledge is given unto us these exceeding great and precious promises. In other words, the Word of God contains the knowledge of God. So you've got to know some things from the Word of God in order to hear God's voice. And then on yesterday's broadcast, at the end of it, I was sharing about that another prerequisite to hearing God's voice is that you've got to be still or you've got to quiet yourself. In other words, you've got to listen. You've got to turn down the volume that is coming to us from the world. And I gave an example of myself about how I woke up and had this scripture, Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. It was just like a banner. And so that day I spent just being still. I mean, I sat and literally didn't do anything but blink for an hour and a half or two hours. And I began to notice things that were there all along but I was just too busy and occupied. My focus was on other things. I began to notice ants and chipmunks and deer and birds, and I could hear sounds that I couldn't hear before. And it wasn't because those sounds weren't there. It was because I was preoccupied with something else. And one of the reasons that we miss the voice of God is just because the noise of this world drowns out the still, small voice of God. That's a quotation from 1 Kings chapter 19 where Elijah had God speak to him in just a still, small voice. You know, right before I move on to this next thing, let me just turn over here and read this to you because I think that this is significant. Many of us are looking for God in the spectacular and we miss Him in just the still, small voice that He speaks to us in. So Elijah here was discouraged, depressed. He was running away from Jezebel who had threatened to kill him. And he came to Mount Horeb and he was in a cave. And the Lord said this unto him, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. He said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains 
and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Those are three very spectacular, I mean, um, amazing manifestations of strong winds and earthquake and fire. But the Lord wasn't in any of these spectacular things. And then it says in the last part of this 12th verse, it says, and after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so that when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Now, Elijah was trying to hear the voice of God. And here are all these spectacular, I mean, supernatural manifestations. But God didn't speak to him through those things. He spoke in this still, small voice. And, you know, God can speak to us in an audible voice. You can physically see something. You can audibly hear things. If that happens, it doesn't take a lot of perception. But that is not the dominant way. God said that without faith, it's impossible to please Him, Hebrews eleven six, And the Lord doesn't usually speak to us through spectacular ways. It's this still, small voice. He speaks to our heart. And it's just a still, small voice that He speaks to us in. And if you let the world and the noise of this world just control you, it will drown out just this still, small voice from God. And so that's what I was talking about, that we need to have some downtime. You need to listen. And it can't be just quality time. It has to also be quantity time because most of us, our hearts have become so dominated by all of the things that are happening here in this world that it just takes a while to purge ourselves from that, to get our minds to where we're really focused on God without any distraction. It not only takes quality time, it takes quantity time. Let me turn over to, you know, this parable that Jesus gave about uh, the sower sowing the seed. It's listed in Mark and in Matthew. And in Matthew chapter 13, here's something that Jesus told his disciples. He said um, in verse 15, for this people's heart is waxed gross. Man, this, this is great. Every one of these words are powerful. You know, when it says that their heart has waxed gross, that's not the way we would say things today, but this is a word picture and it's very descriptive. The way that they used to make candles back in these days, they would take a wick and they would just dip it in hot uh, wax and then they'd lift it up. And in just that second that it was in that hot wax and then the second that it's out of the wax, it immediately cools off and just puts a coating of wax on that wick. And then they would dip it again and pull it out and that would put another coating on. And they would just repeat this over and over and over and over. And eventually you would build up a candle. That's the way they made candles. And so this is what it's talking about. Their heart has waxed gross. In other words, it's not just one time that caused their heart to become gross. Or what he's talking about here is it's, uh, he goes on to say that their heart has waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. And so he's talking about when their heart is waxed gross, that's talking about that it's become dull of hearing, their sight has dimmed. It's not a one-time thing, but it's a progressive thing. It happens little by little. It's like this old proverb about, you know, you can put a frog in boiling water and it'll jump out. But if you put a frog in lukewarm water, it'll stay there. And then you just increase the heat and it'll literally stay there until it boils to death because it just happened gradually. Well, if, you know, we were to just have something that instantly hardened our hearts towards God, most people would reject that. But we just let the cares of this life and all of these things come in and it just little by little by little desensitizes us to the voice of God. So this is the point I'm making is that God wants you to hear His voice, but you've got to seek it. You have to have some knowledge 
AND YOU HAVE TO HAVE SOME DOWNTIME. YOU HAVE TO QUIET YOUR HEART. YOU HAVE TO GET RID OF THIS CLUTTER AND ALL OF THE NOISE THAT THIS WORLD IS GIVING US IN ORDER TO heal, HEAR THIS STILL, SMALL VOICE. BUT THE LORD SAID THAT THEIR HEART HAS WAXED GROSS OVER A PERIOD OF TIME. WE JUST ALLOW THE CARES OF THIS LIFE TO COME IN. SO OVER IN MARK CHAPTER 4, HE'S GIVING THIS PARABLE ABOUT THE SEED THAT WAS SOWN. THERE WAS FOUR DIFFERENT TYPES OF SOIL THAT IT WAS SOWN IN. THE SEED HAD THE SAME POTENTIAL IN EACH ONE OF THESE TYPES OF SOIL. IT WASN'T THE SEED THAT WAS THE VARIABLE. IT WAS THE SOIL, AND THAT SOIL uh, IS A PICTURE OF OUR HEART. THE SEED WAS THE WORD OF GOD SOWN IN PEOPLE'S HEARTS, AND DIFFERENT HEARTS PRODUCED DIFFERENT RESULTS. AND THE THIRD HEART THAT HE WAS TALKING ABOUT IN MARK CHAPTER 4, VERSE 18, IT SAYS, THESE ARE THEY WHICH ARE SOWN AMONG THORNS, SUCH AS HEAR THE WORD, AND THE CARES OF THIS WORLD, AND THE DECEITFULNESS OF RICHES, AND THE LUST OF OTHER THINGS ENTERING IN, CHOKE THE WORD, AND IT BECOMETH UNFRUITFUL. AND SEE, THIS GOES RIGHT ALONG WITH THE POINT THAT I WAS TRYING TO MAKE, IS THAT YOU HAVE TO HAVE SOME DOWNTIME. YOU HAVE TO DESENSITIZE YOUR HEART TO THE THINGS OF THIS WORLD. YOU HAVE TO PUT THOSE THINGS ASIDE. YOU HAVE TO FOCUS ON GOD. AND IT CAN'T HAPPEN IN JUST A MINUTE OR TWO. NOW, THE MORE YOU DO IT, THE LESS TIME IT TAKES FOR YOU TO KICK OUT ALL OF THIS CLUTTER AND THIS NOISE THAT HINDERS US FROM HEARING THE VOICE OF GOD. THE MORE YOU SPEND TIME IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD, THE LESS TIME IT TAKES TO PURIFY YOUR HEART AND TO GET RID OF THIS uh, STATIC THAT IS COMING FROM THE WORLD. BUT WHEN YOU FIRST START THIS, I WOULD DARE TO SAY THAT THE AVERAGE PERSON TODAY IS SO DOMINATED BY THE WORLD AND THE THINGS THAT THE WORLD IS SAYING THAT IT MAY TAKE YOU A PERIOD OF TIME. I MEAN, IT MIGHT TAKE YOU 30 MINUTES, AN HOUR. IT MIGHT TAKE YOU A DAY OF JUST FASTING AND SEPARATING YOURSELF FROM ALL OF THE THINGS THAT YOU NORMALLY DO IN A DAY TO RID YOUR HEART AND YOUR MIND OF THESE THINGS SO THAT YOU CAN HEAR THE VOICE OF GOD. THAT'S AN AMAZING STATEMENT, AND I KNOW THAT A LOT OF PEOPLE DON'T, don't SEE THAT, BUT I REALLY BELIEVE THAT OUR LIFESTYLE TODAY IS NOT CONDUCIVE TO HEARING THE VOICE OF GOD. YOU KNOW, I READ A BOOK BACK WHEN I FIRST GOT TURNED ON TO THE LORD ABOUT A MAN NAMED SADHU SUNDAR SINGH. SADHU IS A NAME FOR HOLY MAN IN INDIA, AND THIS GUY WAS AN INDIAN AND ANYWAY, HE SAW SO MANY MIRACLES HAPPEN. I MEAN, HE SAW UP TO 12 PEOPLE IN ONE DAY RAISED FROM THE DEAD IN INDIA, AND THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE HAD COME OUT, AND HE WOULD PREACH TO THEM. AND ANYWAY, HE BECAME VERY FAMOUS, AND THIS WAS BACK A LONG TIME AGO, IN THE EARLY 1900s. I THINK IT WAS AROUND 1910 WHEN HE HAD A MEETING SET UP IN THE UNITED STATES, AND OF COURSE, THAT'S BEFORE YOU COULD FLY OVER. HE TOOK A BOAT. IT TOOK LIKE, I DON'T KNOW, A MONTH OR SO FOR HIM TO ARRIVE IN THE UNITED STATES. AND THEN, uh, BECAUSE OF THE TRANSPORTATION AND STUFF, HE HAD PLANNED LIKE A YEAR'S WORTH OF MEETINGS IN THE UNITED STATES uh, BEFORE HE RETURNED TO INDIA. AND SO HE GOT OFF OF THE BOAT IN NEW YORK CITY. HE SPENT ABOUT 30 MINUTES OR AN HOUR WALKING AROUND NEW YORK CITY, AND HE WENT AND GOT BACK ON THE BOAT AND HEADED BACK TO INDIA, AND HE SAYS, THE PEOPLE IN THE UNITED STATES ARE TOO BUSY. THEY WILL NEVER HEAR GOD. THEY'RE TOO BUSY TO HEAR FROM GOD. AND HE SAYS IT'S A WASTE OF HIS TIME, AND HE JUST WENT BACK TO INDIA. THAT WAS IN 1910. WHAT DO YOU THINK HE WOULD THINK TODAY IF HE WAS TO COME INTO YOUR LIFE TO WHERE, I MEAN, WE we VERY SELDOM EVER HAVE A DOWN MINUTE. WE'VE GOT ALL OF THESE CONVENIENCES. WE'VE GOT COMPUTERS NOW. WE'VE GOT Uh, YOU KNOW, MICROWAVES. WE'VE GOT EVERYTHING THAT SPEEDS UP AND GIVES US MORE TIME. AND WHAT what DO WE DO WITH THAT MORE TIME? WE JUST FIND SOMETHING ELSE TO FILL IT WITH. WE THINK, WELL, I CAN BE MORE PRODUCTIVE NOW. I MEAN, I GO TO AIRPORTS A LOT, AND I HAVE LITERALLY PAID ATTENTION TO THIS, SITTING AT A GATE, WAITING on ON A FLIGHT, AND I'LL LOOK AROUND, AND EVERY SINGLE PERSON THAT I CAN SEE, I MEAN, 50 PEOPLE, 100 PEOPLE, OR WHATEVER, EVERY SINGLE PERSON WILL HAVE THEIR PHONE OUT, HAVE ON SOME DEVICE, HAVE EARPLUGS IN, LISTENING TO SOMETHING. THERE'S VERY FEW PEOPLE THAT JUST SIT AND EVER THINK. YOU KNOW, BACK A GENERATION AGO, BEFORE WE HAD ALL OF THESE TELEVISION STATIONS, BEFORE WE HAD ALL OF THIS 
internet, before we had the phones and before we had all of these things, people, you know, after a day's work, they'd have a meal and they'd sit on their porch and they'd just look because there was nothing else to do. They might read a book or something. That'd about be about the only thing that it could occupy their time. And because of it, neighbors would talk to neighbors. Uh, if people walked by, you'd say hi to them. Today, we become so isolated, so insulated from everything, even from God, and we are just constantly being bombarded. I've actually heard statistics. I don't know if these things are true, but I've heard that the average person spends up to four to five hours per day on their phone. And I'm not talking about just calling somebody and talking to them, but looking at the latest news report, uh, you know, playing games and doing things. But four to five hours a day and yet people will say, I just don't have any time for anything. I tell you, we are just so busy. It's exactly as this verse is saying that the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things are just choking the Word of God. It's also choking us hearing the voice of God because we aren't listening. We're listening to everything else. We're listening to the news. We're listening to music. We're listening to everything else. You know, even if you are listening to the Word of God on, on uh, some kind of an audio device, even if you are watching television, which I guess you're watching television right now, there's nothing wrong with these things. God can speak to you through those things, but you can't just do this 24 hours a day. You need to have God speak to you. You know, when I got back from Vietnam, during my time in Vietnam, I was a chaplain's assistant, and the most, most of the time, about nine months out of my uh, 14 months that I was over there was without a chaplain, and I was just by myself, and I had nothing to do. And so I would just sit and study the Word and read the Word up to 15, 16 hours a day, and then I pulled bunker guard every single night, and during that time of bunker guard, I would pray. And so that would be four hours that I'd pull bunker guard. And so anyway, somewhere around at least 12 to 16 hours a day, I was just seeking the Lord and praying, and God was speaking to me. Today, right before I made these programs, I, I had a Zoom meeting with some people who are, are in Vietnamese, and they're going to our Bible college over there, and I got to talk to them, and I was talking about that the things that the Lord showed me, those seeds for those things were sown to me during that time I spent in my bunker just studying the Word up 12, 15 hours a day. But anyway, my point is that after 14 months, we didn't have radio. I didn't have a book to read. The only thing I had to read was the Bible. I would just study the Word and pray. I became sensitive to hearing the voice of God. And when I got home from Vietnam, man, I was so excited to get back with my friends and we would go to meetings every single night. I was the one that had the car and I would drive a group of people and we would go to meetings and I'd come home at 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. Then I'd have to get up and go to work during the day. And as soon as I got off work, I'd clean up and I'd go. And we were going to meetings in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You could go to a meeting every single night. And I mean, after a month or two of going to meetings every single day, and I was going to church meetings. I was listening to preaching. But after a month of doing that, I, would, I began to discern a callousness, a hardness in my heart. I wasn't hearing God the way that I heard when I was in Vietnam. And I was praying about this and saying, God, what's happening? And he told me, he says, you're, you're hurting yourself by going to church every night. And some people may not understand that. I'm not saying that church was bad, but I'm saying that you can't just substitute hearing other people tell you what God has spoken to them. You need personal time with the Lord. And when I was in Vietnam, I mean, I just spent all day, every day with the Lord uh, for 14 months. When I got home, I was spending time with my friends, Christian friends. We were talking about the Lord. We were praying. We were going to church. But it was hindering me hearing the voice of God. You can't substitute just listening to the Word on 
on uh, some media, some audio thing. You can't just substitute being around Christians, hearing other people preach. You need to be in direct communion with God. You need to have God speak to you. And I learned that I needed to quit. You know, I started holding back at least two nights a week and just spending time studying the Word and praying and listening directly to the Lord. I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be evil things that are dominating your hearing and your sight, but you, you can even have good things. You can even have Christian things. You can become so busy serving the Lord and doing things that you don't have time for the Lord. If you really want to hear God's voice, you've got to start being still and knowing that He is God. You've got to have some downtime. You've got to have time that you withdraw from all of the things that you do that occupies you, and you have to just get into the presence of the Lord and focus on God. And I'm telling you, this is an area that I believe Satan fights Christians in, especially in our day and in our culture, probably as much as anything else. Certainly not everything that's coming across the news, coming across the radio or the television is God. Even on Christian stations, there's a lot of stuff on there that's not God. I'm not against Christian TV. I'm on Christian TV. You're probably watching me on Christian TV, and there's a lot of great networks, but there are programs on there that I've seen some programs on Christian TV that if you listen to it and swallow everything they say, I guarantee you it's not going to be healthy for you. You need to use some discernment. You can't just watch Christian television or Christian radio or Christian music 24 hours a day. Sometimes you need to shut those things off and you need to just be in communion with God. And I know that some people may say, well, man, that's going to hurt people listening to you. Well, I, you know, I have no problem if you want to bypass me and go directly to God. And if God goes to speaking to you, that's just great with me. I'm an intermediate step. And there's some people that haven't established this link with the Lord yet, and they can't hear directly from God. And so they need me to come and teach them things and things like that. But man, it wouldn't bother me at all if everybody just went directly to the Lord and bypassed me. Now, I know that that's a huge step. That's a quantum leap from where the body of Christ is now. So I feel job security. Man, there's going to be, there's plenty of people that need to hear the teaching and the things that God has shown me to help them establish that link with the Lord. So I'm not challenged or threatened by this at all. But I am saying that you can't just listen to other people 24 hours a day. You need to let God speak directly to you. And so that example I gave, I was actually more in tune with God in Vietnam when there was no other distractions around me and I was just focused on God than when I got back to the States and I started going to church meetings every single night. You need to have some downtime. So the things that I've shared this week already are that God wants to speak to you. That's not just for a few people. It's not for the super saint. It's for you. God wants to speak to you, but you have to seek. You have to have some knowledge and you have to have some downtime. You have to be still and listen for that still small voice. You have to turn off other sources. And those are the things that we've already covered. And I tell you, we're just beginning to get into some things that could really, really help you. I've got all of this teaching in CDs or in DVDs entitled How to Hear God's Voice, and I would like to encourage you to please get these materials. Everything that I know about this, I've put on there, and it would be a big blessing to you. So listen to our announcer as he gives you some information about how you can receive these products. Call or write today and join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Andrew's complete teaching, How to Hear God's Voice, is available as a CD or DVD album for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. 
This is the last day we'll be offering this teaching, so be sure to respond today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I want to let you know that when you support Andrew Womack Ministries, that we also support a lot of other ministries. We actually started the Springs Rescue Mission that is now the largest distributor of food and clothing and furniture in all of Colorado Springs. We've got ministries to orphans. We've got ministry to children that have been caught in the sex trade. Uh, we support uh, pregnancy centers. They've actually lowered the abortion rate in Colorado to one of the lowest in the nation. And there's just a lot of things we do. So when you support here, you are helping us reach people all over the world. Harris, an accredited Bible college in the beautiful town of Woodland Park, has been changing people's lives for over 25 years. The people here are so like-minded. They want to help you grow. These are people who genuinely care about you. They want the best for you. Be prepared to be blown away with the teachings. It's not just a season in your life. There's no way you can't change. You can't really go wrong going to a place that you get to sit and listen to the Word for four hours a day. Being under the Word that much just allowed God to pour so much into me. If you feel supernatural peace about coming to Karis, that's God. I know you're like, how, when, where, all these questions, just do it. The Lord will provide. I was doubting and second guessing it, but when I took that step of faith, immediately like things were provided. Just being around like-minded believers, teachers who are there for you and ready to talk to you at any moment and answer your questions, there's just nothing like it. Just follow the leading of the one that you serve and that's always gonna be the right direction to go. Go to karisbiblecollege.org to register today. I wanna let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's gonna really be good. We're gonna use our instructors from the school and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis Daily Live Bible Study five days a week. If you believe that God has been telling you to come to Karis Bible College, Campus Days is the perfect opportunity to see what it's really like. All it takes is one word from God to totally, totally, totally change your life. Did you know if you have a desire to be here, you've already got a word from God. If God has spoken to you, you've delighted yourself in the Lord, He's given you the desires of your heart, then you start moving. At Karis Bible College, all kinds of people are discovering God's love and the purpose He has for them. If God is calling you, come to Campus Days.